how's it going? Before we get into this video, NQ Stats does not provide strategy. It does not provide indicators, and it does not provide investment or financial advice. What NQ Stats does do is provide statistical edge derived from historical market performance. Nothing shown in this video should be taken as advice of any kind. This video is providing a tool that could potentially be leveraged to make a trade decision. You as the trader are responsible for how you leverage and build around it, in addition to how you enter, exit, and manage any trade you decide to take. With that said, let's get into it. All right, how's it going everyone? Uh, this video is going to be on the net change standard deviations. Uh, real quick, standard deviations involve collecting data from a sample. Um, I see a lot of people on FinTwit, I think this stemmed from like ICT or something, uh, calling the FIB tool, like FIB extensions, calling that standard deviations. Uh, those are not standard deviations. All these these influencer, you know, FinTwit influencers and educators out there, uh, to include ICT, they're all calling it the wrong thing. Uh, it's just that simple. Standard deviation involves taking a sample of data and getting the mean or the average of that data sample, whether that's like people's height, shoe size, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Whatever the sample of data is, price. Uh, getting the average and then seeing the variance in the plus or minus, um, you know, the plus or minus uh, extension from that mean, from that average of that sample of data. Uh, it is not the same as, you know, just taking a chart and drawing a, a fib tool and then, you know, saying, hey, uh, just show me some, you know, projections out to whatever whatever realm uh, you want to see it so like for example you know this little this little down leg and then up you might say something like some manipulation leg and then two standard deviation you see people say like down to the two standard deviation for uh, some type of reversal and then four completes the move you know something like that um, it, it, those are not standard deviations they're just fib extensions so moving on from that now standard deviations um, Again, this measures variance from the mean, so how are we going to get this information, first of all? Uh, well, you can get this for really any time frame. Uh, personally, I use weekly, daily, and hourly standard deviations. Um, what we're going to go through this example here is daily standard deviations. Uh, so how we will do that is all you really need to collect, you can do this any number of ways. You can do this externally in Excel, you can do this through code and um, PineScript, Thinkorswim, NinjaTrader, using C++ like I am. Uh, there's a million ways you can do this. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just use um, pretty basic pulling some data and then throwing it, throwing it in Excel. So what that looks like, all we're going to collect here is the close minus the open divided by the open. That's going to give us the percent net change for every one of these daily bars. So if I take the um, close of this big red bar right here I take the close and I minus the open and then I take that value and divide it by the open I now have the net change of that bar and I want that for all the bars in the sample so this sample is going to be a thousand days um, so what we're gonna do and this is just the last thousand days today is March 12th uh, so we're gonna run this script it's already installed you'll see over here in the right print statements generate after I refresh so here's all of our thousand bars worth of net changes. Um, it's probably going to be like roughly 700 uh, values because um, I think a thousand. If this is set on a thousand days, yeah, it's like 700 actual trading days since it's a thousand calendar days. Uh, so we'll bring it into Excel for the purpose of this demonstration. Paste that in. So now we have all of our net changes. Um, now. I just want to know what's, what's the standard deviation of this, uh, of this sample. So you can do this in Excel with built-in formulas. Um, we'll, we'll go through and do, right, like what's the 0 0.5 SDEV, and what's the 1.0 uh, SDEV, and then I'm like, what's the 2.0 SDEV. So how we're going to get this is you just want the 1, start with the 1, take the uh, stdev.p formula, standard deviation of the population, and we want that first net change all the way down to the last, roughly 700. And now we have that plus or minus percentage. And then if we want the 
we'll just multiply that value times 0 0.5 to get half of it. And if we want uh, the two standard deviation, we'll just take that value and multiply it by two to get the two standard deviation. So now we have plus or minus percentages um, for these that changes. So what this is saying and, and how you can visualize this is let's look at uh, random.org uh, or actually uh, measuring you.com. We'll, we'll get to random.org here in a little bit. Um, so here's measuring you. So what this is saying is one standard deviation submit. We'll see the z-score to percentile and that's going to be 68%. So what that means is that let's say you have a ton of net changes, um, boom, boom, you know, daily bar, price chart, uh, yada, yada. So that is a one day, that's one session. You know, here's your session open, um, you know, and then you have the rest of the session. So what this is saying is to the one standard deviation, two-sided, it's 68%. So all values, if this is the one standard, the, the negative 1.0, and this is the positive 1.0, 68% of all values fall within that region. Uh, if you change this to, let's just say the 2.0, uh, that is 95%. So, like, let's just say this was the two, and we'll we'll deepen this a little bit. Let's just say that was the two. So for this day. 95% um, of all values historically fall within this range. And this will make more sense when we pull up an indicator. Uh, but that's what that is saying. Now, when you look at one-sided, so let's look at the 1.0 one-sided um, percentile. What this means is, this is saying 84%. So what this means is, is if you are going down to the negative 1.0 or the positive 1.0, it's saying that you have... Um, it's including, if you look at the bell curve, it's including everything from one side into the percentage or into the percentage. So when we go back to two real quick, you'll see that this percentage is 68 plus 31. Uh, if you take 31 and divide it in half, you get like 15 and a half. If you add 15 and a half to 68, you get the one sided, um, uh, percentage. See how that takes away that that half and adds it to this side. So now it's saying that on the down move, like, like let's say if we're going down and we hit the negative 1.0, 84% of all net changes happen above that negative 1.0. And again, this all makes sense when we look at the indicator. Just want to provide that initial background. Um, now let's look at just a random day, it makes this a little fair so nobody can say, uh, I usually like to do random days so nobody can say it's cherry picked. Um, so we'll get date. This is just one random day over the last year. Uh, this is saying um, April 5th of last year, 2024. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go to April 25th of last year. And. Uh, wait, what was that? April 5th. That's right, April 5th. So this is a Friday. All right, here's Friday, April 5th last year. So now how we're going to look at this, we're on a daily chart. We want to get down to something smaller. Let's go to a 15-minute. And we'll turn the indicator on. It's already on. We just have to, to unhide it. All right, there you have it. So now what this is, is doing is... Let's take a look. Um, we have our net changes. We already collected all that, right? Last thousand days. I use 20 years of data. Um, you can use 20 years. You can use 10 years. Whatever you whatever you want to use. I, I feel the more data you have, the better. Um, so that's why I use a high amount of data. Uh, but this is 20 years worth of net changes. And this is a 15-minute chart. So these 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 1 etc., they represent... Um, those percentages. Remember we talked about those percentages. So when we bring back up this chart and I say, okay, I want to know as price is coming up statistically, if we hit the 1.0 net change wise for the session, 
what is the probability that the session will close below the plus 1.0? All right, so one-sided, that's 84% probability. So when you look at all last 20 years worth of net changes, it's it, this line, 84% of the sessions have closed below this line. Um, now when we look at the 5, 0 0.5, and we just focus on the plus 0.5, uh, so we go and we say, you know, the plus 0.5 here, uh, that is 69%. So roughly 70% of all sessions have closed below that. Now what about the like the 1.5? Right, so the 1.5 is 93. So if you get the price all the way up here, only 7% of sessions historically have closed above that line. Um, now when you get up to the 2.0, let's do that one real quick. Probably 90, yeah, 97. So if, if price traded all the way up and tapped the 2.0, only th only less than 3% of sessions closed above that. So this is just math. This isn't anything magical. These lines are drawn at session start. They don't change throughout the session. Uh, this is just purely looking at historical distribution of price on a daily time frame, and then applying it to any intraday minute based time frame. Um, so that is it in a nutshell. Now, how do you use this? Personally, for me, I, I tend to stay away from trading around the session open, right? Like all up in this range right here from, from like the 0.5, you know, somewhere like in there. I don't like to trade in here. I don't like to trade in there because price is kind of, it, it can go either way. There's no tension on price. There's, you know, if you think of like a rubber band, rubber band, you call this the rubber, uh, the rubber band theory. If you think of a rubber band, the farther you stretch it, the more tension there is for it to snap back. And that's that's mean reversion. Uh, the farther you stretch price away from the open, the mean, the more tension there is to pull it back. And that tension corresponds to an exact probability based off of the z-score. Now you can put in, like, what have you wanted to know? Um, you know, what 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 gives you an 80% probability, right? Because that that is a specific probability. Uh, so if you want to say, okay, instead of z-score to percentile. What about percentile to z-score? And they have that on here as well. Uh, I do all this calculation in um, NinjaScript for my indicator. Um, and if we, it's just an, an idea for those of you who are, are builders out there. So I can take it and look at show HVD data top left. And then now it's going to tell me where price is. It's saying price is at the 0 0.9 deviation right here. And there's an 82% chance of reversion. So if I go and I'm looking at percentile to z-score, and I type in 82%, uh, and then I go, oh, this is probably going to want 0 0.82 perhaps. Can't remember if it needs that. Uh, yeah, and then we want one-sided. All right, there you have it. So 82% probability, 82%, and then... 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. So at the one, at the plus 0 0.9 standard deviation of daily net change, 82% of all values or all, all sessions have closed below that. So how I use this as, as price is moving up, I know, I know the exact probability historically, or at least speaking from historical price, I know the exact probability of sessions closing below current price. So when I'm coming up and I see certain percentages, and this gets into strategy, which I won't speak to, um, you all can develop your own strategy. I'm just showing you the concept and the tool. Uh, but when you get to certain percentages, you can expect um, reversion. Uh, think of it as just, again, price stretching like a rubber band stretching. Uh, so typically you'll see a lot of reversion at the 0.5s, the 1.0s, and the 1.5s, quarter, quarter increments. But there are some key percentages out there worth exploring and looking into where you'll you'll often find uh, very good reversion trades um, so that is it in a nutshell I, I don't like to trade around the open because there's no tension on price I like to wait till price extends away to a specific uh, probability of of reversion and then I like to frame my trade ideas around that um, up, up in here you know at the 1.0 I would probably be looking for short 
entries. Um, I mean, this was last April. I don't even know if I traded this day, but uh, this is where I would be looking for short entries. Now, how do you also tell if today is going to be a trend day? Like, what if what if the session opened and we just did one of these? Because that can happen. Um, well, this is how you tell. So let's look at a day where that happened. Uh, this wasn't a trend day, so let's turn on historical sessions. See if we can find a trend. Oh, perfect. The exact day before. So look at price here. Price goes from session open, trades up into the 0.5, and then reverts down through the open. Look at all these red bars. Down through the open, hits the 0.5. Still red bars. There's no consolidation. There's nothing. So when you when that happens, when there's no consolidation of price, you can likely assume that we're going to the next deviation. Um, See how price traded up on this day and kind of consolidated a little bit. That could have been a potential reversal, but that's not trending. Um, there's there's tension on price, uh, obvious tension on price right there. Uh, as this day was moving down, we we're just blowing through these deviations, and then we ended up closing the session. Um, let's see if there's another example of consolidation. Oh, here's a good example of consolidation. So here we're trading around the open. Remember, we don't like to trade around the open, or at least I don't. And then we come down to the 0.5. There's there's no consolidation here. There's there's no price stopping. We just blow right through it, and we go all the way down to the 1.0. All right. So now at the 1.0, negative 1.0. Um, remember, the negative 1.0 is e squared to percentile. Uh, if I do a one-sided, this is still set to percentile. All right, what's, what's going on here? Let's go back to the C score to percentile. So now the 1.0 one sided. I want to know what's the probability of closing above the 1.0. And that probability is 84%. So when we're trading around the open, remember, don't like trades around the open, we come down to the negative 0.5 and we blow right through it. There's no consolidation. I'm not interested in longing that. Now we come down to the 1.0. Price starts to chop. It starts to chop around here. I can logically assume that now we may realize this probability of 84%. So we will likely revert back up, and that ends up being what price did. Um, there's a million entry models you could use to get in this move. I'm not, not going to cover that, but um, that's how you would use this information. Now let's we'll look at one more day. Uh, this was just a mean trading day, mean trading day, mean trading day. Here's a 0.5 reversion, so a very good example. Um, price trades around, the mean comes down to the 0.5, and you don't blow through. You get you get a consolidation of you know red bar, and then immediately up close bar that closes above the open of that last down close bar. So now it's logical to assume that price might want to trade back to the mean. So back to the mean, the session open could be your target. Um, and so forth and so forth. Here's another 0.5 rejection uh, there where we blow through up to the 1.0. Here's a 0.5 pivot. Uh, here's a we're trading right through, no consolidation up to the 1.0, and then pivot back. And again, just example after example of, of how this plays out. Um, that is how you use this information, at least I how I use it. I use, this is daily deviations. I use weekly as well to frame out my, my swing trades for the week typically try to position around like the Monday, Tuesday time frame, and then run my trade all through the week uh, if I'm taking a larger swing. And uh, intraday trades, I like to frame my intraday trades, uh, like bigger move intraday trades using daily deviations. And then if I'm scalping, uh, I like to use a combination of hour stats and then hourly standard deviations of net change. Uh, so that's it. That concludes this um, you know, video. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, uh, just 